There may be times that we want to condense our data frame into a smaller data frame. And to do this, we have to remove some rows. We can use various combinations of indexing and subsetting procedures to accomplish this. So to start out, let's just briefly take a look at our SE process data frame again using the head function. So again, the head function gives us by default the first six rows of a data frame. Let's say that we want to remove just the first row of this data frame. In order to do that, we can use an indexing procedure. So let's draw this in a new object. We'll call it SE for self-evaluation and then the first row removed, so we'll say one removed. So we'll start with our data frame, which is SE processed. We're gonna index here, so we'll use our bracket notation. Again, remember that there are always two values we're gonna use when we index, the X and then the Y. The X always refers to the row, Y always refers to the column. So here we wanna remove the first row, so we can use a negative sign, which means remove, and then we'll indicate the first row with a one. And we wanna do this for all columns, so we indicate all using a blank. We'll run the code, Let's now take a look at the head of SE1 removed. And you see that compared to the original data frame, we've removed the first row because it starts with row number two. Now we can remove multiple rows using the concatenation function. So let's say we wanna remove the first four rows of our data frame. Again, let's store this in the new data frame. We'll call it SE for self-evaluation. And then we'll say one through four removed. Again, we'll start with our data frame, which is SE processed. We'll index using brackets. And now we want to remove rows one through four. So we'll use the negative sign because we want to remove the concatenation function. And then we can remove one, two, three, and four. Now again, rather than specifying each individual row, because it's sequential, we can simply just do one through four. And then we want to do this for all columns. So we're going to leave columns blank. Let's run the code. Now, if we look at the head of our new data frame, we see that we've removed the first four rows of the data frame. Now we can also remove rows by condition. So let's say we want to remove all of the rows in our SE process data frame for all of the students who play piano or keyboard. Let's store this in a new data frame. We'll call it SE processed, no piano or keyboard. Now when we remove by condition, we're going to use the subset function. Always, anytime we use the subset function, we're going to identify the data frame we're working on. So it's SE processed. And then if you remember from a previous video working with the subset function, we need to indicate our criteria. So here we're gonna say instrument, which is the name of our column, is not equal to piano keyboard. We'll run the code. Now if we take a look at the dimensions, we see that we've retained 133 rows and all six variables, as opposed to the 150 observations from our original SE process data frame. Let's do another example. Let's say that for our original SE process data frame, we want to retain the children with an age of 16 and older or 10 and younger. So in order to do this, we can use the or operator. So let's store this in a new data frame. We'll call it SE processed, 16 or older. So we'll just say 16 plus or 10 and younger. So we'll just say 10 minus. Again, we'll use the subset function. We'll first identify the data frame that we're working with, which is the SE process data frame. And now we need to indicate our criteria. So here we're gonna say child age 16 or older. So greater than or equal to 16. Or, so we're gonna use the or operator here. Child age is 10 and younger. So we'll say less than or equal to 10. Let's run the code. Now if we take a look at the dimensions, we'll see that we've retained 73 rows. 